Great Smoky Mountains National Park is an incredible place to visit. It's a great place to make memories and to get out on the trail. I absolutely love visiting this national park, but today I wanna to share with you what I feel is the worst thing about Great Smoky Mountains National Park and how to avoid it so you can have a better vacation. My name is Ash and I'm a former park ranger and the founder of Dirt In My Shoes. And today I want to share with you a little thing that you'll definitely wanna know as you're preparing to go to Great Smoky Mountains. Um, that is because this can make or break your vacation. Um, it's something that's a really big deal to me um, so that I can have a better trip and so that I can cover more ground when I'm in the national park. So what is the worst thing about Great Smoky Mountains National Park? I would say even going beyond the obvious, which is that Great Smoky Mountains is the most visited national park in America. It sees about 14 million visitors a year. And so as you can imagine, it is a very busy place. So with that comes some parking issues and other a myriad of things that you'll have to deal with while you're here. But for me, the biggest thing that I just really dislike about visiting Great Smoky Mountains National Park is the traffic situation. Because actually a lot of these visitors that are coming to the park and going through the park are not actually there to sightsee. Um, a lot of them are driving along the Newfound Gap Road to get from one place to the other. Um, and so it, it, you will have the parking issues typical of a park with this visitation, but more so for me, what is the most frustrating is the traffic. So looking at the map of Great Smoky Mountains National Park, we have Gatlinburg up here, which is the main entrance into the park. It's the main gateway town. This is on the Tennessee side. And so this is where most people come in if they're wanting to really explore Great Smokies. You've got a couple other entrances, so you can come in through Cherokee down here, but this entrance stays pretty quiet. Then you've also got the Townsend entrance over here, which Townsend is the quieter side of the park on the Tennessee side. So again, that stays pretty quiet as well. The traffic you are going to deal with most in this national park is centered around the Gatlinburg area. And I cannot tell you how many times it just gets so backed up back in here. The traffic gets so bad because a lot of people, especially just people coming to the area to explore, not even to go into the park. A lot of people don't come specifically for Great Smoky Mountains. They come for Gatlinburg. And so you've got a lot of people staying in the Pigeon Forge and Gatlinburg area going back and forth. And I will tell you what, this strip of road right here gets so bad sometimes that it can take you almost double the amount of time that it should normally take just to drive through this area to get into the park. A lot of people don't realize this, and so they'll take their sweet time in the morning, you know, just kind of get up, have a nice breakfast. Oh, should we head into the park? Sure. And then you drive, um, and you're driving, trying to get through Gatlinburg to Great Smoky Mountains National Park, and you're sitting in traffic forever, and it gets really, really frustrating. And so to avoid this, you really just need to get in the park earlier than most people. Don't take your time in the morning. Make sure you're getting up and getting moving if seeing Great Smoky Mountains National Park is the most important thing to you that day. Um, get in there as early as you can because otherwise you're just stuck in traffic trying to get to the park. The other area that you'll wanna take into consideration when it comes to traffic is the Cades Cove Loop Road, which is over here. And you can see these arrows, this loop road, it's pretty small, but it's a one-way loop. And so you get in here and you have to kind of go around this way. You can cut across in a few spots to cut down, but then you miss some of the sites that you're there to see. So most people just drive the loop road all in one day and all in one go. 
Now, the problem with that is that if, again, you don't get up early enough and you're not in there and you don't get started before everybody else, then what happens is just throughout the day, the traffic compounds and just gets worse and worse. It builds on top of itself because you've got all these cars in this very small area and you're all driving the same way and you're all trying to get to the same things. And so it's very common if you don't get started early enough to get in there and not only are you just creeping along because there's so many cars trying to get through, but when you do get to somewhere that you want to stop, a lot of times there's no parking because everybody's trying to stop at the same places. So that's another area of the park where traffic can just get so, so terrible. You do not want to be in here in the middle of the day because a lot of it will just be sitting in your car waiting to move when people decide to drive, which is so frustrating. So keep that in mind for Kate's Cove as well. Now, one thing about Kate's Cove that you can't probably avoid is if there are wildlife sightings, which does happen quite often. Kate's Cove has a lot of bears, and so it's really exciting, actually, when you're here. There's a really good chance you might see a bear. But if you do, again, everybody's only able to go the one direction. And so um, for me personally, I have seen a bear in Kate's Cove, but I also had to sit in traffic for about two extra hours because of that bear. So keep that in mind, um, but if you can get to Kate's Cove before everybody else, that will make a huge difference in your enjoyment of this area. If you'd like my specific suggestions for navigating around the Smokies and avoiding the traffic, check out this Great Smoky Mountains itinerary on Dirt in My Shoes. It's an hour by hour plan with driving directions. I tell you what times to be where, I give you a really good plan to avoid those crowds so you'll see views like this instead of the back of somebody's car. Despite the traffic in Great Smoky Mountains National Park, it really is a phenomenal place to visit. There are so many cool things to see and do. Um, there are so many fun activities both within the park and outside of the park that will be perfect for your next family vacation. So I hope that you'll still go to Great Smoky Mountains National Park, but just keep in mind that you'll wanna get a nice and early start to avoid all of that traffic. If this video has been helpful for you, please subscribe to my channel. You'll also find more videos helping you plan the perfect vacation to Great Smoky Mountains National Park. I hope that you have a fantastic time and don't forget to get some dirt in your shoes.